This channel is not intended for children. Please kickstart responsibly. Hey everybody, I'm back. We're still got a couple of February things that popped up and we're going to be plowing our way through March. I have so much March stuff in my queue. There could be two episodes already. It's going to be a busy month. It's already a busy month for March because in this episode alone, I've already backed a couple things because there's just so much compelling things out there. Also compelling, if uh, you guys like Street Masters, I made a uh, three-hour playthrough episode in the other channel. If you are interested, go ahead and check that out. But otherwise, let's get to the campaigns. And we're starting with Universal Rule. This is a whole new uh, expansion set for this little tiny game that fits in your pocket. It offers AI rules as well because it didn't have any way to play solo uh, before. There are a couple hundred people that bought the previous games. They want to expand out. And uh, this is so beholden to the original that even on the Kickstarter video, they did a little introduction for about 30 seconds and they just played the old videos over. That's an interesting tactic. I think they should have updated it a little bit to show how the game has grown and been exciting and all that kind of stuff. But uh, if you are looking for something that is simple, that has the 4x rules, explore, exterminate, all that kind of cool stuff that uh, you're used to playing with regular strategy games, then this is 18 cards of fun that you can fit and probably take anywhere. Then we have an interesting take on the theme park builder. This is Danger Park. We've seen a lot of campaigns last week uh, or previous weeks that uh, people want to build basically um, roller coaster tycoon in a board game and that's all fine and good and it seems to be oh the happiness of your patrons you made them all cool and everything like that this is a little different this has uh, a mechanic where you actually make the meeples sick and they have vomit meeples and all kinds of other stuff uh, this is to make a dangerous park that isn't necessarily fun, but is life-threatening. It's a very interesting tactic to take. Uh, no one else is doing that. And maybe after playing through this game, you want to adjust some of those other games to bring that kind of mechanic in for all kinds of more fun. And then for those of you that like to play your RPGs with metal miniatures, this is the Dark Cobbled Cavalry. So the Cobbleds, Kobolds, however you want to pronounce them, they uh, are little draconic little guys, and they are very tiny, so they run around on things that are not horses for their cavalry. So you have lots of different types of animals, looks like weasels, and uh, maybe some lizards are in there, different types of, of uh, characters that you could put out. I don't know why they necessarily need to ride around on them, but it is a cool idea. I'm sure it'd be a lot of fun to paint. If you like painting metal, then uh, these might be for you. Definitely interesting and haven't seen too much else uh, on the market like this. You do see a lot of things for goblins, but not necessarily for kobolds. So uh, if you're looking to spice up your kobold uh, attack party, then go ahead and get some cavalry. I did see uh, Kill Your Party with Kobolds. If you look that up on YouTube, then uh, there was an interesting article, I don't know, six months ago, uh, somebody had put out, and uh, I thought that was, was pretty neat. I forget which... Uh, of the DM channels it is, but uh, the guy had a lot of good content. It was just an interesting take, about 20 minutes, on uh, what you can do with kobolds, and this would help uh, if you decided to do that. Then if you guys watched my channel or came to my channel and subscribed to it because of the last Conan attempt at a Kickstarter, here we go! We got the new one. This is Conan the Conqueror, so here's some things to know about. They have a very, very limited amount of retail copies of the original Conan. So you can pick up an, an, another Conan retail copy in the future if you want. But right now, this is just for an expansion that allows you to bring in the solo mode rules and the Tome of Skelos, which has a bunch more adventures. And then, as you can see here, this is not included in any of the pledge levels. The Tales of the Red Brotherhood optional uh, set of uh, missions. There's also a new optional... Uh, uh, expansion that's going to come out with uh, Serpent People. And then there's a little bit of controversy because this round allows you to use Mythic Battles characters in uh, Conan for him to fight against. But you have to 
opt in to get the stretch goals because the software that they use wouldn't allow them to do it otherwise. They're going to be free, but a lot of people were complaining like, why do I have to have this extra plastic? Mythic uh, or Monolith would have been happy to send them out to everybody, but they just didn't want to have to, for whatever reason, throw away the extra plastic. So you have to check the pledge manager and opt. Then on the other side of the spectrum for the audiences, this is Catitude. This is for a family-friendly affair that Conan is not necessarily in that realm. Uh, Tiny Game, they have all these little painted uh, cat meeples, if that's something that you're interested in. And basically the game is supposed to be based on cats being jerks, because they can be, because they are uh, psychopaths. That's They just are. Their brains don't have the capacity to do anything else. Um, either you think that they love you, you feed them. How much are they going to love you if you stop feeding them? Just try, give it a shot. Open the door. Let them out. See if they still love you. They're psychos. So that's what Catitude's about. These little psychopaths running around. And uh, they knock things over. They do whatever. They play around. And you get all these different cards to, to run that experience. So if you're allergic to cats like I am. And you want the experience of having a cat. Then maybe Catitude will help uh, bring that experience to your life. Speaking about giving experiences to your life, how about you bring that experience all about your life, your personal life, or your fantasy life? You can give it a face and give it a name and then go roll some dice because Face Folio will give you all the faces you want. That's basically what it is. It's cards and uh, they let you have all this nice, interesting artwork. And it also is a good opportunity to remind you that Zine Quest is still going on. So all of these really tiny campaigns are continuing to flourish and have hundreds of different ideas that nobody else is putting out there because they are too weird, too wacky, or just too small. And otherwise for a dollar, two, three, four, ten, very small amount as opposed to a couple hundred for each one of the other games that we've got uh, that we're talking about in, on Kickstarter, Zine Quest puts all those little tiny ideas together in one place so you can check it out. There is a lot of neat stuff. If you haven't gone there yet, don't miss out on your opportunity to check it out because it will be ending soon. Then we have a very old type of game that uh, maybe your parents and whatever went, go down the track and play, and that's horse racing. I'm not uh, that big a fan of horse racing. It's not really something I go for uh, just because I suck at gambling. I lose all the time. If I can't cheat, I can't win, so why would I go do it? Anyway, uh, this is uh, an emulation of well, that, it's a racing game, it has money and different things, so you can have, uh, you know, the experience of placing bets and all that kind of cool stuff without actually losing your shirt, and uh, you can name the horses whatever you want, despite what they're named, Seattle Slough, whatever, you can name it uh, Sal the Turtle if you want, or anything else that floats your boat, just uh, put a post-it on there, it's a masking tape, I don't care, I'm not going to tell you what to do, and uh, you can get that, uh, you can play that uh, experience. Here's a small campaign that almost missed its shot to get on the list. This is Demons of the Spoiled Realm, but I figured they look so much like really cool garbage pail kids of the uh, fantasy type that I had to you know, make sure it got on here. These demons, they have lots of different uh, shapes and personality that they show through the sculpts. You can uh, paint them lots of different cool colors, make them look all types of disgusting. I would prefer myself when I want to use muck and uh, make things look uh, gross to use the Games Workshop technical paint. Some of the bright greens and other stuff, they look like boogers and whatnot and uh, make other things look sick or even can look like moss and other uh, ways of uh, making just things look aged or decrepit. Uh, those ones look pretty cool. And uh, you can pick these guys up and uh, make a... An interesting goblin, an interesting demon, an interesting whatever you want it to be with uh, these, uh, they call them hobgoblin hobbies, they call them demons, they don't need to be, they can be whatever you want them, uh, and the, to put up against your players, or just have them on the shelf and paint them, because I think it would be uh, a lot of fun and interesting. So lots of interesting shapes, like I said. I don't know if you read this story when you were uh, a kid, but the Billy Goat's Gruff, they have to take on the troll and all that stuff. That's what this game, Gruff, is based on. And they turned it into these mutated war goats. I don't know if the game is fun because I haven't played it, but it's freaking awesome that they took that little childhood story and turned it into this uh, crazy combat game with 
I don't know if you want to look at them in, in terms of like Pokemon, but mutated uh, war goats. Just the name, mutated war goat. You could be a heavy metal band with that name. You know what I mean? Like it's it just sounds cool, and uh, there's lots of interesting things on there. It's multiple players. It's not a solo game. Uh, actually, sorry, it is. You can play uh, it as a solo mode, so that part is neat. But you have multiple players, and you can play against each other, and uh, design decks and strategies and all kinds of cool stuff. And you play a Shepherd of Woe, something that you could also, if it's not already a metal band, it should be, right? Pick a band name off of anything involved in this game. That's always a good sign of, of some Whispers of Madness. Even that, come on, band names all over the place. At least give them a look. Then with a different theme of ancient Japan, we have Hunt the Ravager. This is about hidden movement. So I'm not sure, other than the artwork and maybe the names of things, uh, how the samurai part fits in. You're supposed to be some type of, uh, maybe you're a ronin. You're trying to defeat an empress by running around and looking for particular items to help you uh, in the, a final battle, maybe. It's, um, it's interesting. The artwork looks really cool. The idea of it being hidden movement is neat. The standees are... A matter of taste that's up to you it does keep the cost down but uh you know it's something that you don't have to paint which is also good uh but some people would prefer more of a 3d space it depends on how your table's set up when you play with other people if you're playing with somebody directly across from you then a standee is okay because you're both looking at it on a flat surface it may have some difficulty seeing the, the uh, standees if you have somebody that's at a 90 degree angle to you uh to somebody else uh, in a three or four player setup they might find it difficult to see who's doing what uh, but that's all a matter of taste and uh, up to you i think you should give it a good look because it's not necessarily like a, a minis combat game that a lot of these other ones are have been especially the ones that we're uh, able to review uh, this hidden movement thing sounds interesting and moving from japan to china we have the prince of kunlun this is just a figure and there is uh, it's a 54, 54 millimeter figure. I do like painting things that size, especially when I get the Kingdom Dust stuff that I get. It's a little on the expensive side, but it's a short run. And it's something that can really highlight your skills as a painter, if this is what you're going to go for. Those koi fish are going to be an incredible challenge uh, as you try to go through the scales. Uh, but it could be a lot of fun going through and researching the meaning uh, of different uh, koi patterns, uh, what the, the different aspects uh, would be, how you would do the folds on the, uh, the the clothing that he's got going on, the shine of the beads, different things you could do uh, with your finishes or varnishes, setting up different uh, semi-gloss or high gloss or satin or whatever it is, even flat stuff to be able to create extra contrast between it. So there's a lot of cool things you could do with this miniature. It is uh, an interesting challenge, and it's not just the typical uh, fantasy stuff that you see pretty much every week. It's uh, it's the first time I've seen one that was this expressive, um, showing like the power of not caring as much, but you know being so strong that you just you can be relaxed and and, and calm and confident about it uh, in the the pose and the sculpt. Yeah, if you're interested in your painting. Check it out. And heading back to Japan, we have Testament. It is not a heavy metal band. It is a anime game that uses cards to fight one big monster. And that's cool. It says it's directly influenced by Final Fantasy. I know that those Final Fantasy games are all different. I've only played through part eight. Uh, I hear seven's really good. It does not look like seven <laughs> as far as the artwork. Um, you're going to have to tell me if uh, this looks interesting to you because the, the anime uh, world is still something I'm not all that into. Only thing I really play is uh, Kingdom Death that has that kind of aesthetic. Uh, but it looks interesting at least. You can do one big boss battle and uh, you have a bunch of different ways that the cards can work and different types of skill sets. And I know a lot of people like Final Fantasy. It's got the font, <laughs> right? Um, and, uh, if this is something that would interest you, I throw this in there for you to check out. Then sticking with Japan again, but going back in time with the style of artwork, Bushido the card game, this is the second edition, and he's trying to put out, uh, more 
enhanced components this time around uh, with the stretch goals. Has not quite reached those stretch goals. Uh, it may fund. It's getting close to uh, the time where uh, um, you know they, it really needs some more backers <laughs> to, to push this thing over the edge so that they don't have to do a second round. But uh, it's a push or luck game. You roll dice and you can place it in various um, attributes or into uh, a way to impress your daimyo. And uh, that's it. So that's it for uh, all these Japan themed games that are all coming out at one time. So you can pick what uh, type of uh, Asian world that you're into. If it's old Japan, new Japan, hidden Japan, China, have a blast. Then we switch to the Western world and the coins of the tarot. If uh, you thought cards were just too easy to shuffle, then coins of the tarot is here for you. So a lot of people may not understand that. Um, the suits, the 13 cards and the suits in regular playing card decks, a lot of that is mimicked in various tarot decks where you can have cups and swords, stars, all wands, all kinds of cool stuff, depending on whoever is making it. And uh, they can also fit within that 52 card scheme. Um, so why not have, instead of cards, just having coins? It's it, something if you were going to use D and D, uh, Curse of Strahd, or uh, one of the other uh, types of tarot decks or tarot mechanics. Uh, now you can just put them in a bag and pull from the bag and find your fate out of the fate bag using this type of uh, of construct. If uh, that works for you, great. Otherwise, you could have the weirdest game of poker you ever thought of uh, by playing whatever's on the the card, since the suits will, will match up with. A lot of what you see on uh, the coins itself. Interesting ways to uh, to spend a Saturday night. Then another campaign that's trying to create a substitution for something that you already have. This is Deco Dice. Um, instead of rolling the dice, you can draw cards. There is some advantage to this. You can play in the car or play on a train, bus, plane, whatever you want to do. Um, and then you don't have to worry about rolling things or making a lot of noise. So I would say the main reason why you would want to use uh, one of these decks is the noise factor. Dice can can annoy a lot of people. And uh, if you just have these ready to go and, and you can just pull them off, then uh, this may uh, mitigate that, not make parents mad. You can quiet your children <laughs> using these types of uh, uh, devices. And uh, otherwise, you can take this with you, say, to a restaurant or some other place um, where you wouldn't necessarily be able to have a big full setup with uh, dice and everything like that. Um, then, uh, yeah, you can do just a quick shuffle and play as you want. Uh, also, if you lost some dice or, you know, you don't have them on you, then these 24 cards, it's an easy thing to carry around. Options, lots of options. And we can't forget about the future. This is the sci-fi art series Alpha. And it is just a bunch of nice high-res uh, pictures of things that you can either print out, cut out, or use on a, like a Surface tablet or whatever it is that you've got. Um, some use of iPad. I don't know. Whatever it is that you want to do. And um, it will make it easier for you to populate a world or a map. And they are all nice and shiny and they've got the artwork on them is really nice scales are consistent and uh, it might be something that you need they have vehicles they have rooms they have other types of scatter stuff uh from different views a lot of these are top down but that's not necessarily the only case that's that way and uh, you can take a look at what all they have on offer then we have golem's gambit this is a game made to use these pieces they're brass they're iron they are wood and when they say handcrafted, they are not kidding. A dude straight up puts a hunk of iron uh, billet into a forge and forges out the iron ones that you see there on the right, right there in the video. Just He's got a couple of punches. He's got uh, an anvil there and a hammer and just lights it up and makes them. So uh, if you want some very heavy components to replace dice, uh, Gollum's Gambit may be up to, you know, something that you can use. It uh, says that it's a full tavern game, and I, if you use the coins and all the other stuff with it, that looks like it would be uh, one interesting use. 
I would say if you were LARPing, then uh, you're LARPing the role of being in a tavern. It could be neat. Uh, there's also the concept of div divination, right? Forged in fire. Different ideas. It is cool to see people forging. I like watching that stuff. Alex Steele entertains me several days a week uh, with his antics as well as Forged in Fire and all that other cool stuff that Baltimore Knife and Sword puts together. This could be one of those interesting things for you. Then we have Storm Dragons. This looks a lot like just about every other card game that's out there, but the big selling point is you play just dragons. So it's not like you're playing a bunch of different types of monsters. There's a bunch of different types of dragons. If you were a dragon fan, the artwork is pretty solid. Uh, I mean, I've seen worse. I've seen better. It's solid. And the, the game itself might be something that you're really interested in. If the dragon is what you're interested in in Dungeons & Dragons, <laughs> and not so much the dungeon, then Storm Dragons may be the uh, regular card game that uh, you play when you're not uh, doing your RPG stuff uh, in between to uh, to get your fill and to enjoy it the most. Most of the time, I only spend time uh, fighting dragons in Skyrim, but uh, for everybody else, I think they're at least going to be fun. Uh, you know, artwork's good, and uh, you know the idea of it's fun. Reign of Fire, the most fun. Then a quick reminder about Make 100. It means that there's only going to be 100 of these made, and that's why these handmade moss dice uh, are extra special. There is a, another YouTube channel where a guy just has a pressure pot where all he does is make custom dice and he has done this moss effect before. But for 500 bucks for all the equipment to do uh, making these different die dice, I think it's just better just to pick it up off of one of these uh, Kickstarter campaigns and let them spend the money on it. I do think that uh, the metallic paint does work against the green so you can actually see what's going on uh, even though it's clear having something in between like the green moss is much better than having just pure clear dice because then you see through the back um, if it's too clear uh, you won't be able to see the, the dice as it pops up so as far as the design choice I think it's pretty good because at least you can see what you rolled which I think is uh, very important as a function of dice design. And if you want something for some druids, maybe some rangers, or even a holiday theme, this might all be uh, great for you. And you can contact Althea Giorana, Gia Nera, I think, for that. And this may be my favorite thing right now to uh, be out. This is the recipe for adventure uh, for 5e. I wish people loved to cook as much as I do and loved uh, RPGs as much as I want to love them <laughs> because this would be the perfect adventure hook for me is to go out and find the recipes. Let's say, because uh, I want to play a warlock, let's say my patron wants to feed on Hag's Eye Chili as is in the example there. So I got to go get the components to make Hag's Eye Chili in order to maintain my uh, my pact with the patron. That sounds amazing, right? Somebody super powerful, but just too lazy to do it themselves, and then hires a minion, which would be basically me, you know, the uh, as a warlock, to be able to go handle that stuff. It's a great adventure idea. There's so many different cards, so many different ideas. Um, instead of just getting equipment, this is something I think that it, it could be great. And if you wanted to go as balls out as I would, if I was making Hag's Eye Chili as the adventure, you damn right, we'd have chili beans on the pot ready to go as a snack. Think about that. Then there are games that I don't understand and I have a really hard time explaining and they tend to come from Japan. And there are two of them in this campaign, Reach and Okazaki Inc. So... That's what's going on here. You have Reach, which is a space combat thing, and then Okazaki, which is either DNA-based or some type of molecule. Yeah, they're uh, very weird. Um, they're very limited. They're going to be handcrafted uh, and put into 18-card envelopes just for you. Um, they're not quite to the shipping, uh, the, the, the goal to, to be able to get these made. 
but uh, take a quick look and see if you can figure it out and if it interests you. Uh, tossed up the artwork there so you can kind of have an idea of the aesthetic and the feel and maybe it'd be fun to play this in a science class after school that kind of thing so yeah take a good look and see if you can figure out uh if you'd enjoy it um the the dna one like i took genetics back in 95 96 and it would have been an interesting way to be able to teach genetics at that point. So, um, yeah, just thinking about that. Maybe you're a teacher out there. And we have something that would be perfect for Mother's Day, but is not going to arrive until July or after. And that is Saucy Grannies. They have various multicultural grandmas that are going to make some type of stew sauce soup thingamajig. So that's what grannies are good at, right? They uh, learn it the old school way. They've been working on it for a very long time, getting their flavors down, trying different things out. So that's why they're the best. And uh, you can play a game with your grandma or the kids can play a game with your mom, their grandma. And uh, they can go to the market. They can uh, talk to, you know, see other grannies from other cultures that they've got there. So they got the Mexican grandma, they got... The Asian grandma, they got all different types of grandmas on there. And uh, these folks in Singapore have created uh, a very family-friendly, very interesting uh, concept. Because everybody eats, right? And, uh, you know, the, the, everybody's got some type of culture that they follow. And um, they'll be able to find their grandma somewhere in this game to play with and uh, make a soup or make a sauce or make a stew or make whatever it is that you're, you're out there it's a cute deal there's also cats for other cat people then we have a studio that i have bought from in the past and i can say they make good products this is the spare Um studio um they right now this is creatures of crom's fault they are basically lovecraftian uh it looks like a hound of tindalos and you got obviously the big badass himself cthulhu and just because i i will probably pick up everything in the world that is lovecraftian doesn't have anything to do with how good a job they do at breaking down the various parts for your 3d printer and uh just making good sculpts that fit well um yeah these guys are are good i'm just throwing that out there i've used them before i'm sure you'll be happy with whatever prints you do and uh, their sculpts are always top-notch fun they got a lot of interesting things to upgrade your board games they i think i found out about them because i was looking for a catapult that they make uh, to be used with besieged and that was like total game changer makes that game so much more fun and less frustrating <laughs> because they made that uh yeah can't say enough good things about spare room they do a good job Something else that's a little more simplified that you can use in your Starfinder games if you don't want to use all the intricate um, uh, artwork that we talked about earlier in a previous campaign. Meepleverse 2, a Meeple Odyssey, ill-gotten games has these 3D printable, Meeple-ready, uh, low-poly count uh, options for, for things like Starfinder. So these are all sci-fi based. They're ships. Um, there's a couple of buildings, train. You can use them kind of however you want, but uh, floors and different things. They don't have a lot of detail, so you can use them and reuse them over and over again. Um, one of the problematic things with having something that it has too much detail is kind of pigeonholes you into the specifics of what it's supposed to be used for and having something like these little guys then color is the only difference so you can set up your player characters versus uh just regular neutral npcs or you know different things going on in your world based on the filament that you use so lots of options you can make it in resin you can make it in pla you could do whatever you want with them because they're low poly count you won't really notice too much and uh, yeah, just something that could be uh, a, a helper in your uh, attempt to put this world together in space. Then we got a game, and I don't know if I've reviewed this before and just forgot and included it again, <laughs> but this is Slip Strike. It reminds me of Spy vs. Spy. Uh, it's more like a meeple version of Looper. You have two agents that are trying to kill each other, 
and they can teleport and time travel and do all kinds of crazy stuff and go to various locations trying to dodge each other. And then there is the blue and there is the orange. So they seem to promote with the blue, but I think you can also just get the orange. The orange might be an expansion to increase the, uh, the player count. So it'll go from one, one to two, two. Now, I don't know if you can do uh, three player or if it's just two or four, however it's supposed to work on that end. Um, but the orange box is definitely different than the blue uh, box. It has different locations and things like that in it. If uh, you're interested, check it out. They do have uh, the cool meeple looking things. And like I said, it's uh, it's a fun kind of like looper where, uh, you know, the, the guys are trying to attack each other, but they also have the ability to uh, hop around through time and do different things and manipulate stuff. Could be fun. Then we have a cool idea. This is Wesley's Wooden Wonders. These are dice towers and dice trays that uh, fold in. So they pop out and you can just, you know, take a look. There's resin, which is plastic. Then there's CNC milled wood, which is wood. You can get in different finishes. You can put your dice in there. You can fold it down and then it fits into one little container. Uh, I don't know how tight it goes doesn't obviously doesn't have some type of latching mechanism you can put a rubber band around it if uh, you're that worried but otherwise you can put your dice away you can take it with you it's not gonna flop around or do anything crazy um, by milling it out of a single piece of wood then uh, that means that you're going to have less of a chance of those little uh, paddles breaking and that parts up to you I prefer to use the dice cup um, because I found that I can actually manipulate the dice, even when it goes through the dice tower, by just kind of hitting it on the one side. <laughs> I found that I was able to uh, keep getting the same types of rolls. Um, so, you know, to make it more random for myself, I had to use a dice cup. But uh, if this is a scheme that works for you, I think you should check it out. They are a little on the expensive side because they are nice, and uh, there's a lot of work put into it. Then we have Zombie Pileup. This is a matching game where you have weapons of various types that are used against zombies of various types. So it's all color coded and also they have symbols for the people that are colorblind. So that part is all nice. And uh, at the end of the, the game, you run up your score and there you go. So if you have a friend and you like to beat up on zombies and you want to play a fast paced game, this is a good option. They're also trying to put out a lot of different types of expansions that uh, make it so you can get more points and have slightly more complicated uh, weapon types uh, required to destroy um, the various zombies. And uh, yeah, so they have trick decks, boss fights, hordes expansions, all kinds of stuff. And they are funded, so they're already moving into those, uh, those wonderful um, stretch goals. So take a quick look and see if uh, this type of art works for you, if this type of game works for you. I think it'll work for a lot of people. And it's cheap. It's 10 pounds. Then we have something that is absolutely not cheap, and that is Batman the Animated Series by IDW. They have lots of different options and uh, have just about everything, every character that you could have loved or wanted to fight as Batman from the original run of Batman the Animated Series is here it runs off of the same type of system that uh, the ninja turtles games are made on you have dice that are specific to the heroes which increase the costs quite a bit so um that's one of the reasons the game is so ridiculously expensive it's like 225 bucks to get everything uh that's just starting out uh obviously um the paint jobs would look great if they were what you see there on the right but those are colors from uh, 3D renders. Those are not actual paint jobs. You get the basic flat uh, gray plastic. Um, but if you like the system that IDW created for Ninja Turtles, then uh, this is gonna be a lot of fun. This hits all the nostalgia feels and is probably gonna take all my money. Money, 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 money. It's getting it all. So between Conan and Batman, uh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for the next couple months, but at least I got my taxes paid. Then we have Knights and Ninjas, which looks kind of neat. Um, it looks a little bit like cereal box artwork from the sixties, doesn't it? The way that the design is all made. Uh, it says Knights and Ninjas, but there aren't a lot of ninjas based on what I see in the preview. Maybe there's one ninja. 
Um, this is supposed to be like a party game. It plays quick, and uh, you take these gems and try to steal them from other players using various tactics, and uh, you have a few different options where you can attack or you can fortify against it, uh, do something special, in, or defend yourself in a capacity. And you see, even there, like in the gameplay, I don't see any ninjas. There's a ninja on the box, there's a ninja in the video, so there's a ninja somewhere. All right, then we have Trust Me, I'm a Doctor. Well, for these guys, first I'm going to tell you, trust me, I'm an editor. You, you got to figure out how to do your sound mixing, because in the video, they have this music cranked way up high, which is fine, but they don't lower it while the other people in the uh, video are talking, which is supposed to be an introduction to the game. So you would want it to be very expressive, and you want it to be very clear. Uh, in those circumstances, there is some... Uh, automated uh, ways you can use Adobe or if you're hiring somebody to do the effects um, they obviously found out how to use some of the effects because they got it in black and white <laughs> and then they got you know uh, the subtitles up but I'm surprised that nobody told them that they really need to uh, learn how to mix the audio so that you turn it down when the people are talking to make it clear um, Plague Doctor uh, Surgeon all kinds of crazy different things are available as doctors in this. It uh, has all of the wacky remedies that people had before, I would say, the 80s, maybe even the 2000s. Medicine is a horrible thing, <laughs> and it does more harm than good uh, up until around the 2000s when they, they start treating it like actual science. And... Uh, yeah, so that's what this makes fun of, and I think that's great. Then we have a reprint of the Amazon's faction for the game Dragon Dice. I have yet to play Dragon Dice, and I'm not really sure if this is more of a retailer-focused uh, system, but they are, I, I would say, a little bit on the expensive side because they, they offer you three dice kicker packs in uh, big quantities. I'm not sure if this game is played with multiple packs that you have to buy if that's uh how that works if you're a fan of dragon dice though i'm going to assume that you know about it this is not a way to get other factions or other things to complete your game this is just a reprint of the original um amazon faction of the dragon dice game so if you're interested in it and you were a fan of that game you have a big opportunity here to pick up something that you might not have been able to get otherwise and we already had one Batman game, and this one is made by Adam West, which is not the regular Adam West that you know, because he's dead, but a different Adam West that I'm sure is just as good a person and uh, just as viable as a human being. But, you know, he was not a mayor on Family Guy like the other one that I'm probably thinking of more. Empire of the Stars is a 4X game that uh, allows you to run around and blow up your friends as various factions in a galactic empire of spacefaring. And it has some pretty cool uh, ships that you can add on that uh, come in different colors. You can use them for other games if you want. That part's up to you. But uh, they have lots of uh, unique styling to them, and that part's neat. If uh, you were looking for a 4X game, you don't have one already, then I see no reason for you to not to check out Empire of the Stars. And especially if you play Traveler or something else that uh, has uh, space uh, components to it, then you might look at it just for the ships themselves. Uh, yeah, but you know, game two. But if you need something a little more Mexico themed, the Azteca game coin is now available. It's a little bit larger than a quarter, so I'd say it's about American half dollar size. Uh, I don't know, what's that come out to like? Three or four centimeters. Um, it's uh, very intricate. It's, it's nice. It's got that uh, skull pattern that you see for Dia de los Muertes, but on the other side, it has that Aztec theme where it looks uh, a little bit like one of those Mayan calendars, um, you know, because it's in the round shape and it's got all the intricate uh, filigree work into it. And, uh, but obviously, Azteca, different. Um, they come in different finishes, they come in different materials. If this is something for your campaign that you'd like to have, or you just want to have uh, on display, then take a look around.
maybe you'll need one of these coins. Then something that you absolutely do not need, but you may want, is Damascus or Brass Dice. And I warn you guys every single time when we start talking about these metal dice that it will take chunks out of your table. It'll take chunks out of your floor, depending on the materials you've got. If you are like me and you have a glass uh, tabletop, then uh, it's going to crack it. <laughs> it's going to shatter it. Uh, if you're near a window and these things go flying the wrong way, it may shatter the window. But some people like having super heavy dice and they like the Damascus look. Uh, as I said before, you know, I find forging interesting and that part is nice and cool. But let's just be realistic. It could cause more damage <laughs> than you intend, depending on where you want to go. Uh, these are just D6s, so, you know... Ooh, it depends on what game you're going to play. Um, they look pretty, but they're more of a display piece, I'd say, than something that would be your uh, daily roller. Then we have a simple game that was reviewed by Dice Tower. You can check that out if you go to the uh, link in the description of my video for their campaign and just click on their video. Then it'll play you the Dice Tower review. <laughs> That's what's in the, uh, the, the video there. You can jump ahead to it. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's nice to have a game that's themed about the jungle. By the time this thing actually comes out, we have the Jungle uh, Cruise movie from Disney that's coming out later this year. So if you want to play this with your kids, I would say that would probably be the best synergistically. Uh, as far as anything else, uh, you'll have to take a look and see if it's, it's got a lot of different elements that it's pulling from a bunch of different types of games, a little bit of everything. And you have to find out for yourself by taking a look at the example if the everything that's included is the everything that you're looking for. Then we have a game about camping. That's what Bivouac is. So if you're one of those folks that likes to go out in the woods with a tent and you would like a worker placement game that relives that experience, that's what Bivouac is trying to be. And they have a little bit of engine building and seasonality is... Uh, a factor in a lot of the things that are uh, put out there, but basically it is about setting up your camp, your campground, and effectiveness of use of resources and the various things. Uh, it's not necessarily for me because I don't go camping, but uh, I just don't have the time. Like, I gotta go somewhere else and then I can't work. You know what I mean? I get called to work like four in the morning. I, I might just get called into work after working until two in the morning. Weird things happen, but. If you're one of those folks, and I know a lot of people really enjoy the experience, this may be something that you can do with a um, like a, a scouts troop. Play with them. You know, have uh, something that they're familiar with. Reinforce the things that they've learned. That's probably the best use of this. And if you had fun in Ghost of Salt Marsh, and you're looking for something that is even more aquatic and weird, that's what Descent into Midnight is. This is a tabletop RPG that has nothing to do with anything on land this is an entirely aquatic world and it's supposed to be and completely untouched by human civilization so uh certain things uh theme wise may be the same and just like power struggles and all that but the rest of the construction of the universe is going to be entirely different so if you're looking for something that takes place in the water descent into midnight may be the game for you then we have a game about politics that accurately describes the, the state of the world right now. And that's as dumpster fire. Absolutely. And how do we get there? Well, we have leaks and media frenzies and crazy public outcries and accusations of fake news and escalations that should have been de-escalations and then retaliations and then just some random shakeup. Wait, that's what's all in the cards too. Hmm. Pretty accurate. It's a pretty accurate way to think about the world. Uh, here's the problem. Sometimes it's too close to reality and you just want a game to escape. But if you have a lot of people around you that have a good sense of humor and aren't going to just feel more stressed out by looking at these things instead of escaping into a fantasy world, then uh, this could be a great game for you. For my friends, they want space. They want something else. They want anything but what's going on in the real world. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's just up to you uh, what you can handle. For me, uh, if I didn't have to play with people <laughs> that uh, wanted to escape, I think it would be a lot of a lot more fun for me. 
because uh, I find the humor uh, in all the craziness that's going on. So, uh, yeah, that's dumpster fire. Speaking of escapism, I'm going to let you guys escape from me. If you would, subscribe. You can hit the bell if you want, if you want to be notified whenever I make an episode. Otherwise, I come out with one usually on the weekend. I try by Fridays, but, you know, sometimes it ends up Saturday, Sunday, like uh, this time around. But you can watch during the week and, uh, you know, check back in. It's always great if you like as well and comment and subscribe if you got something to say and want me to look forward to. We went through about half of March. I still have plenty more to go. April's even stacking up. So it's not like we're going to run out of episode content anytime soon. And uh, yeah, you guys have a good one.